Thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I've known the guys behind Web Exercises for a while, and I truly appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit of foundation training with you. And I know that you all are, are kind of on the clinical side of things, and some of you very much so. So I'm going to take you straight into a behind the scenes look of what our certification course is. Not the first thing to notice is the heel to pinky toe. The outside edge of the feet is made parallel, not the inside edge. You can see that these guys have their, their legs lined up in these lines as if they're standing in a 90 degree angle box. That movement of internal rotation allows the facet joints and the SI joint to relieve a little bit of pressure. And it allows the iliacus, the adductors, the sartorius, the internal rotators and the upward adductor muscles, the into the pubic symphysis muscles. It allows them to pressurize a little bit, to tone a little bit, to get tension back from the over dominant glutes and IT bands. Above the hips, you'll see these guys start with the thumbs at the rib cage, the pinkies at the pelvis. That's a basic decompression measuring stick. You're just seeing how much space you have. There's no hip hinge in this exercise yet. There's no real movement. It's just a pull apart. Remember the old finger traps where one finger goes above, one finger goes below. You pull them apart and the net result is tension, particularly at the center, tension and length. That's what we're aiming for. Let's take decompression to a very simple split stance. We're gonna begin with a lunge decompression on the left side. So left leg forward, right leg back. You're not going into a long lunge. You're not doing a runner's lunge. This isn't like a sprinting stride. This is just, if I was to take a nice long step, that works. Chin back, chest up. On the front foot, you have three points of contact. The ball joint to the big toe, the ball joint to the, of the pinky toe, and the heel. On the back, the heel is up a couple inches, so you have the big toe and the pinky toe as the primary surface area there. Take two or three big deep breaths. Lift the rib cage and lift the back of the rib cage wide in the back of the rib cage. And then we're very simply going to take the arms in front of us. From here, you have this big, powerful torso, and I want to add a little bit of an anchor to that by zipping the legs up like a pair of scissors. The front leg is going to drag itself back the back leg is going to drag itself forward, and that dragging happens from as close to the center of you as possible. On the front leg, it's going to feel like the upper hamstring is doing the work. On the back leg, like the rectus femoris, the hip flexor, is doing the work. Squeeze those at each other. Get as tall as you can. Take a couple big deep breaths. And that's your first basic lunge decompression on the left side. Come back to the center. Shake it off. Stand tall for a moment. Recalibrate. Anytime I say recalibrate, you can always just go to a very simple measuring stick for one or two breaths. Find center. There you go. You're good. Right leg forward, left leg back. Basic lunge decompression. Three points of contact on that front foot. And those three points of contact are very distinctly there so that you can push them into the ground and make the rest of your leg work a little bit harder. Chin back, chest up. Hips are square. The back ankle is just a little bit up off the ground and the big toe and the pinky toe are really driving into the ground. Bring the hips a little more square if you can. Everybody tends to have that issue where you just got to drive that back hip just a little more towards center. Take the base of the skull, lift it up off the neck. Let's go into a second position here, that long wing position. In that long wing position, the humerus, the shoulder bone, rotates, not the shoulder blades pulling together. Scoop the arms forward into a sphere of tension, and here we have this nice closed kinetic chain. The fingers are touching pretty firmly, the fingertips. Every joint in the hand is bent. Every finger joint is bent. The wrist is as big and powerful as it can be. From here to here, the biceps, triceps, shoulders, lats, pecs, everything's working. And if you're doing it really well, you even start to feel the obliques. You start to feel the abdomen. You start to feel the lower back. Those are the legs at each other hard. If you do that correctly, it should lift you up just a little bit and start to shake just a little bit. Take two or three more decompression breaths. Just fill up every part of your body you can find with air, with contraction, with whatever. Find some way to make yourself a little bigger, make the ribs a little bigger. And then when you've had enough, you've had enough. Let your arms come down, stand up, come back to center. Practice all these basic decompressions as often as you can. These are the everydayers. 
when you wake up in the morning, if you practice a standing decompression, a lunge decompression, and a couple founders, chances are you're going to feel better that day. Let's begin with the most basic of all, how to simply change your seated posture. We're going to go from this compressed position into a foundation training exercise called seated decompression, and we'll take that into a nice posterior chain-based squat out of the chair and back into the chair. So Dustin, slide yourself away from the desk for a little bit. And then once you're away from the desk, you're going to slide forward about halfway up the front of the chair there. You want about half your thigh off the chair, and you want your heels directly below your knees to do this right. Your feet should more or less be facing forward while you're doing this exercise. And you can still see his torso is pretty, pretty collapsed and compressed. So we're going to take our thumbs and our pinkies like a shock sign. We're going to go thumbs to the base of the ribs, pinkies to the pelvis, and that measuring stick is going to show us the length and space we have between the rib cage and the pelvis. Three or four deep breaths are going to elongate and expand that space. You're not breathing into the belly. You're pulling your rib cage up, out, and away from the belly by expanding the lungs. So inhale, if you can, through the nose, expand the lungs. And as you exhale, try to stay as big and broad, as wide as possible. 